need to read that again. <laughs> oh. Greg Davis, welcome to the Taskmaster Academy. At this educational establishment, we teach our pupils problem solving, cunning, and how to endure ridicule. <laughs> At the end of the course, four of them will have destroyed their careers and will never work in television again. And one lucky winner will have my golden trophy and also will have destroyed their career and will never work in television again. It's like life, cruel and without meaning. We have an audience watching this in the cinema down the road, so let's crack on and meet our five contestants. They are Charlotte Ritchie, <laughs> Jamali Maddox, Lee Mack, Mike Wozniak and Sarah Kendall. And next to me, a man who, like an obedient pup, responds instantly and affectionately to all my commands. And, like an obedient pup, enjoys lapping away at his own mess. It's little Alex Horn! <laughs> Good guys. All right, you dirty boy. <laughs> Riddle me this. Ooh. What am I? I'm small, and yet I can fly. Can you fly? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit more. My first is in flop, but not in pizza. Are you a fly? My second... <laughs> The wetter I get, the more I weigh. I'm a small insect, I'm a fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's crack on. Prize test time. You know it. And this week, the category is the best drinking vessel. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll judge the best drinking vessel, Greg, and that person will start the show with five healthy points. At the end of the show, the person with the most points will take home all five drinking vessels and finally be able to have a few people over for some drinks. All right, then. <laughs> Michael Wozniak. A made a cup. <gasps> what? It was my first try at w wood whittling. Wood not whittling? Wood whittling. Not all of the wounds have healed fully. The intention was a sort of kind of oriental soup thing. It ended up somewhere between that and a love spoon. There's the love spoon. Wow. Oh, um, wow. The face, as you can clearly see, is your face. <laughs> um, the blood has been sanded off. You should have been wearing a little leather thimble. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got children, as you know, but if I had a seven-year-old and they brought that back, I'd probably look to give them support. <laughs> I'd probably... And a 40-year-old man? <laughs> <laughs> Are you counting it as a drinking vessel, Greg? Well, I suppose you can drink it out of anything, can't you? Oh, so they could have brought not in anything. Not a sieve. Eh? <laughs> not a sieve. Mm. Yeah, you could probably get the meniscus around the edge of the sieve. If quick, yeah. <laughs> um, Sarah. Yes. Can you beat that? I... Well, I mean, when you said if I had a seven-year-old who had brought home something, like, uh, which is really a good springboard into... Uh, my daughter had done pottery at school and it was a cup. There it is. Oh. Wow. Um, <laughs> not... <laughs> so, remember, the category is the best drinking vessel. I mean, the thing is, it doesn't fulfil any of the functions of a cup. But I've just gone for razzle-dazzle here. Listen, after the last episode, you're right to up the showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> You've really brought Broadway to the show. Thank you. And uh, Jamali, can you beat either of those? Yeah, I mean, I just went by the rules of the show. Can I say uh... something? Your tone suggests this is going to be rubbish. No, it's not rubbish. It's just I just bought a plastic cup. Yep, you just brought a plastic cup. Yeah, yeah. non-biodegradable, yeah. unrecyclable, just good old-fashioned plastic. <laughs> <laughs> You saw what happened last episode when Sarah was riding around really slowly, right? Yeah. Yeah, OK. But she won the last episode. Ah. Like, I just decided I want to win now. I'm sick victory. of trying to be like, oh, I'm going to bring in a shoe that sings. I'm not doing that shit no more. <laughs> I know what show you're doing. It's, like, whimsy and, ah, oh, it's like, look, oh, it's a vessel and all this shit. I ain't doing it no more, all right? It's a plastic right. cup, non-recyclable. That's what you're getting. OK, so you're going to play Give this me the absolutely down the line. right down the barrel okay. now. I'm done. If you win the series based on this technique, it's going to be a hollow crown. <laughs> <laughs> Lee? Um, I went for a money-can't-buy bit of razzmatazz. It's Simon Cowell's mug. Here it is. Mm. A mug off his table mm. of wow. Britain's Got Talent. And it's unfortunate because we keep giving it to the tree surgeon who's called Simon. <laughs> yeah. And I think he thinks it's a nice touch. And we keep, yeah. oh, I forgot to say that it's not for him. But, and it's happened about two or three Just times. Let, let yeah, Simon I have it. it. I know. How often I, do you maybe... need a tree surgeon? 
<laughs> you know, I mean, annually, you get them pollarded annually, yeah? Not just me, is it? Pollarded? <laughs> pollarded, yeah. That's You're true. not going to be allowed back up north. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, Charlotte. OK, so I've, I've got a tankard, basically. I do believe that it's the best thing you can drink out of. Ooh. It's my granddad's. And underneath, it's glass. I can show you the glass bottom. And what's Ooh. cool about that is that the reason they had glass bottoms is because in the 18th century, the Navy used to drop a king's shilling into people's pints so that when they drank it and picked it up, they'd be like, what's this? And they'd be conscripted into the Navy. So they designed glass underneath so that people could check their pints to check that they weren't going to be conscripted to the Navy for, like, years. Huh. It's a good price. It's a good price. You'd want it. You'd want it. It's a good price. It's a good price. It's a good price. Actually added historical information. <laughs> <laughs> points then, Greg, please. Sorry, Jamali. One point. It's a plastic cup. Second worst, you know, at the end of the day, I have to give you my reaction as to the mug that I want least in my house. OK. Yeah, well, it's Simon Cowell's mug. Two points. Um, oh, my. Just because I'm presuming that in three years there's been a dramatic improvement in her talent, I'm going to give your daughter three points. Fantastic. And unbelievably, for, for one of the worst things I've ever seen <laughs> in my life, I'm giving you four points, I think, because I feel sorry for you. I'll and. The beautiful um, granddad tankard takes it comfortably. Yeah, five, so points. five points. Five points, Charlotte Ritchie. I have judged. <laughs> okay, <laughs> task proper, please, Alex. Certainly. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Hello, Mike. Lovely day. It is, isn't it? <sighs> good day. Yeah. <laughs> Were you just saying good day? I was trying it out, yeah. Yeah. It didn't feel great. <laughs> Make that balloon hover untethered for 20 seconds. Make that balloon hover untethered for 20 seconds. What balloon? During the hovering, the top of the balloon must not be higher than your chin, and the bottom of the balloon must not be lower than your waist. Also, you must sneer throughout the 20 seconds. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. All right. First question is, where's this balloon? I reckon you can almost hear it. I can almost hear the balloon. I think if you listen carefully. Yep. Up, 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 up. Right. How do I get it down? Right. Make that balloon. Oh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> that Has that been there the whole time, or did someone just do that? That's been a foot away from your head throughout. That's incredible. It, it nearly hit you twice. I can't. Right. Well, do I untie it? It's up to you. Mm. There are scissors inside. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> right. I want to establish two things. One, Charlotte Ritchie can't get a balloon off a clothesline. No, she can't. Two, Lee Mack hasn't got peripheral vision. <laughs> he has not. <laughs> right, let's crack on. OK, <laughs> so they had to make the balloon hover and had to sneer throughout. The most famous sneer of all time is, of course, Cyril Sneer, who was a pink card fuck. We're going to see <laughs> Charlotte, Richie, Lee and Mac, first of all. Good luck. Right, so... OK. It's helium. It's helium. OK. Oh, it's helium. What I need to do is find a weight that is perfect. Not too heavy, not too light. Too heavy. I'm not sure this is doing anything. Is that untethered? Yeah. Oh. Jeez. I'll try this sponge, but that sponge might be just about the right. Not bad. It's close, that, isn't it? Is that untethered? Is it hovering? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it? OK. <laughs> Right. Oh. Well, I don't know how to do this. I can see that. 
Ay, ¡Porfia! Oh, you bastard! There must be another one. Don't tell me that's it. That's it, Lee. Oh, come on! Is it definitely gone? Yeah, that's gone. That's... Do you mean is it gone? <laughs> yes. Oh, you mean that balloon full of helium that flew into the sky? Yeah, nothing was getting that back. I think that's gone. OK. OK. Thank you, Charlotte. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Ah. <laughs> uh... Bewildered old man. <laughs> <laughs> His logic was great, though. The, the weight logic yeah. worked to treat, wasn't it? That I was... blew my mind when I saw that. I but... genuinely thought, well, there's no way that's possible. That must have been the whole point of it, was for it to fly up in the air. You thought the point of the task was Well, that it just wasn't possible, yeah. Oh. Of course it's possible. Of Lee showed an is. example of how it's possible. Yeah, I was a bit intrigued. You decided I'm the old static electricity <laughs> trick from yeah. school. Yeah. And then you realised it was helium. Yeah. And then you knew you had to come up with a new system. Yeah. And you went straight back to the old study. <laughs> <laughs> now it's over to Jamali and Sarah to try and make their balloons hover untethered for 20 seconds while sneering. See, it's above my... Is it tethered? No. Nope. What's, what's holding it down? Me. That's not going to work. Just let it go of it. If I go into, like, an airless area... Oh, I touched it. I touched it. You all right there, Jamal? Oh, yeah. Hello. How do you create static on the balloon? Is it rubbing it? Static. Yeah, I tend to rub it. You need the right material. What material is it? Like a woolly jumper. You got a woolly jumper? I can get you a woolly jumper. Can you get me a woolly jumper, please? Who's timing yeah. this? Who do you want to time it? You. No, no, I'm going to start again. That was three seconds. That was three? Yeah. Got your woolly jumper. Thank you. Now, does this count because it's not tethered, it's lodged? Is it hovering? Yeah. I mean, we're being technical, that's, that's hovering. That's hovering, is it? Technically. Is that going to be...? No. <laughs> It's still warm. Did you take off someone's back? Yes. OK. It's still, like, warm. Yeah, they were warm. Well, why don't we go inside? This is better. It's already better. I just had a thought. Uh-huh. What about static electricity? Is that hovering? It's going to be up to you to argue it in the studio. I can't... Oh, I, I won't be able to take on Greg. He's awful. <laughs> So I should start now. OK, uh... One, yeah. Are you sneering at the camera? Yes. You keep sneering. There you go, 20. And you reckon that was hovering? I was hovering. Yeah? Do you not think that was hovering? It's not important what I think. So what's your job? <laughs> what's your job, then? I don't I'm the thought... Taskmaster's assistant. Yeah, but as your assistant, you would know what the thing would... Yeah, I'm not allowed to have an opinion. All right. I measure things. It's not a bad gig. Is that 20 seconds? Alex, are you going to call it? Oh, sorry, I thought you were going to call it. That's 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me as we go on, when you get set unusual tasks to do, you're sort of baffled. <laughs> <laughs> You were quite confused by what I was doing there. And you sort of ask him a simple question. He goes, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's your job, mate. Yeah. What's your job, then? I'm to help him, not to help you. You got a little bit more aggressive now you sit next to Greg, isn't I it? I feel more confident. OK, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your tactic was to go into an airless, I quote, airless environment. <laughs> the famous airlock that is the shed. <laughs> Honestly, this...
Yeah. This movement, yeah. it made your daughter's pottery look <laughs> well, competent. Well, now it's explained. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I think you're being harsh, cos that seemed to work for yeah. a second. The helium against the waft, you just have to have a lot of waft. Well, I tried that with the, yeah. uh, with the, the leaf blower, but I couldn't go at the same pace as a leaf blower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much waft. <laughs> Sarah did it in 21 minutes and 18 seconds. Yeah. That sounds like me. Whereas Jamali did it in 4 minutes and 50 seconds. Nice. And technically, as he kept saying, it hovered. Well done. Right, what's next? Finally, he's lithe, he's blithe, and he looks good in ties. It's Mike Wozniak. <laughs> Will you excuse me a minute? Not too many. Great. Hiya. So I'm just trying to make it sort of uh, a little weight. It's not tethered. OK, let's go. Sneering. I think that was 20 seconds. Uh, one of your little uh, laundry pegs is on that. I'm still sneering. I think, arguably, that's a lost cause. All right, then. Oh! Oh! Balloon back. One sneery, sneery. Two sneery, sneery. Four sneery, sneery. Five sneery, sneery. Sneery, sneery. Sneery, sneery. Twenty sneery, sneery. Well, thank you. I'm very happy I got your balloon back, Alex. When you uh, lose, uh, lose that, in case you need it. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. In an evening victory, when you stepped out of that phone booth, you looked like the head of department from a local council who <laughs> just been fired. <laughs> Talk us through the initial sort of Greek dance. Greek technique. dance? It's <laughs> 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 hovering over a certain area, so I'm trying to sort of keep my described area in the right sort of zone. <laughs> And yeah. I, it wasn't an intent. This just, it just, it's just not really a plan. It's just. I enjoyed your balloon dance. Thank you. And then up it went. And, and up then it up went. it went. And this is where it gets interesting because the two other contestants whose balloon flew away just let them go. <laughs> but not Mike Wozniak. Never let it go. That spirit of the blitz mentality. <laughs> That's right. No one has ever hopped over that fence before. We've never, never had a it. fence hop. How do you feel about that? I felt good, and I was thrilled when I got over the other side that it was just earth on the other... It was really sort of about halfway through the jump that I didn't really know it was on the bottom. <laughs> it could have been a mine shaft. It could have been... <laughs> it could have been a... That would be one hell of an ending to that. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So he's got to have rocked it. Well, he wasn't as quick as Jamali, because he did spend quite a long time chasing this balloon across the golf Oh, yeah, course. he jumped over the fence. Yeah. yeah. So Jamali took four minutes 50, Mike, eight minutes. So just to recap, it's zero points to Lee and Charlotte, Sarah gets three, then we've got Mike gets four points, but the winner with five points is Jamali! Hey! <laughs> you have a look at a scoreboard? I have you a scoreboard. Lee is in last place with two, Mike is in first place with eight points. <laughs> Another one, then. Come on, top, top. OK, well, guess what? It's team task time. And what better way to begin the bonding than with a lovely spat? Hello, Jamali. How you doing? I'm good. Hello, Alex. Hi, Mike. Are you OK with heights? This sort of height? Yes. Yeah, this sort of height's OK, yeah. Do you have any phobias? Rats. And foam. Foam? You like dry foam? You know, like, when you're washing dishes, you know the, the, the sponge? You know, sponge, not foam, like sponge. So cross out foam? Yeah, so cross out foam, like sponge, like dry sponge. And you're fine with flannels? Good with flannels. Um, can I get the task? No, you can't. You're not allowed off the box. Can you pass it to me then? Not yet. OK. Hey! <laughs> hey, what's up? Long time. How are you? I'm good. How you been? Oh! Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Lee, please open the task. There's the task. You're not allowed off your box. Do you have a belt? No, you don't have a belt. I have my coat and then uh, 
shoes and laces, that's going to give us a bit of oh, damn. distance. Yeah, I, I've tied it in this type of knot so you can tie something easier to it. Nice. And you don't think there's an easier way? Hiya. Hey, what's up? Oh, hi. Oh. Hi. That's me, I'm Jamali. I'm Charlotte. I'm hi. Sarah. My shoe don't have no laces no more. Have an argument. You must take it in turns to angrily make a point using no more than ten words, and you must always end your point with a different four-letter word. You must look at each other throughout the argument, and the person speaking must angrily wag their finger during their speech. The argument is over when there is ten seconds of silence or when one of you looks away. Longest argument wins. Your argument must begin three minutes from now. Is there anything particularly you'd like to argue about? Because you look so amenable and nice. Well, that's, I don't know. Well, that's the sort of image you're trying to project, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, underneath it all, I might be a nasty piece of work. Yes. But the last word has got to be four letters. Yeah. Think of a few of those. Hand. Ha, ha, na, da. Yeah. OK. <laughs> My head is filled with the word duck and there's no other word. I keep refreshing it and it's just the word duck keeps coming up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fresh is their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Strange language you use. It was literally just duck, 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 and I was just trying to <laughs> tell myself, just you know. But internally, you were going refresh, yeah. duck. <laughs> and then off again, turn it on off again, see what happens. So Same weird. thing came coming up. Weird, absolutely weird. I enjoyed um, uh, people making up new tasks with the laces, <laughs> and I enjoyed his off-camera smuggery again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know that shots. <laughs> <laughs> There's another person. And then when he goes like, are you sure there's not a better way? <laughs> uh, uh. I've got feelings. I've, I've, I've got feelings. <laughs> Let's have a look. So it's the usual arguing rules. No more than ten words per argument. And the last word has to be four letters long. First up, we're going to see the film and theatre director, Mike Lee. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> I have to tell you, bad Tash. This is precious hair. It might be. But not good. Don't you dare insult my look. I will insult you. You're gonna get your comeuppance, you fool. Fool? Me? I'll give you, you twat. You're jealous. You. Plum. Don't call me that, Mike. got a face like a duck. What are you on about? Pray <laughs> tell. Right above your teeth, it's too bare. Below my belt is also. Below your belt should look like a bear. It's what I mean. You're talking tosh. I'll show you my cock. I would love to see you wang. It is meant to be an argument. Right, well, here goes. You're changing the subject. Can I put it away? It's heavy oh, no. and huge. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, I'm going to oh, have to blow the whistle sorry. there. It was a lovely argument. But he yeah. said subject and I, I lunged in. Oh, shilly shallying. But that is better than some plays that I've seen. <laughs> the National Theatre. It was uh, absolute poetry, and I'm intrigued. The thing that brought it to the end was Lee offering to show you his genitals, <laughs> and, and you visibly wanting that. <laughs> the argument ceased and we found common ground, and then, yeah. You offered to expose your penis to mine, <laughs> and then you announced that it was, and I quote, huge and heavy. Mm -hmm. Did that not say heavy and huge, even? And yeah, you said, can, word. can I put it away? It's heavy and huge. It's heavy and huge. Thank yes. you. So, so you. I mean, I might be crass, but I know the rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the team of three now. Jamali, Charlotte and Sarah. The thing is... Right. Jamali, is that you drive well. I disagree. I hate it. Fuck. You have no idea how Jamali behaves. What luck! Thank you for pointing that out, but I'm angry. Nice ring. Don't. Oh, that's just...
just not a thing, I can't even. When are you <laughs> angry, please? Going to stop. Never. Will I stop that? Can't. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha. How are you spelling that? H A H A. Just wait. Till what am I going to wait for town? Give it a rest. You aren't making any sense, and that's that. Go to bank. You're gonna end on that word? You better watch out, because be careful, where there's a will, there's a will. I think that's more than ten words, if you count them up. Why did you say town suddenly? <laughs> it sounds like a slang word we use for... Oh, know. is that a bad word? You know. Are we allowed to broadcast town? I, I mean, you know, it depends. It's Channel 4, man, so they're, you know, risky. <laughs> Yeah. It just seemed to me to be three people who perhaps have discovered language. <laughs> all, all it said was wag your finger, mm -hmm. argue, and end on four words under ten. It didn't say nothing like, oh, it has to be on topic and you yeah. have to pick a subject. It's, it's... No, I just think it's common sense. <laughs> we could have done a big list of rules, like, like don't just say the word town for no reason. <laughs> you know, language is this thing that someone just made up, you know that. I did look it up on Urban Dictionary afterwards, and it seems that no one there has heard of it either. <laughs> well, mm. well, I mean, Urban Dictionary. Is, you know, doesn't know culture, innit? <laughs> People lose it when they have an argument as well. You don't make sense. You, well, your you... first argument was you drive quite well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and drive me around the bend. Yeah. You need to go to the bank, mate. That's what you need to you do. Got to you need to, to go bank. to the bank and sort yourself out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to tell you some times? I'm ready. The team of three lasted three minutes and eight seconds, whereas these guys argued for five minutes, 35 seconds, with no blunders at all. I want these two absolute arguing legends to get five full points each. Whoa. What about the town team? I'm going to give them two points. <laughs> two points each, OK. But Mike and Lee are the winners of the task. There you go. <laughs> What's lined up next? Just a regular task down at the old haunt. May I? Yes, please. I'll open this then. OK. Yeah. Make the house haunted. Most haunted house wins. You have an hour. Your time starts now. Excuse me? Just going to go and have a little rummage. A rummage? A rummage. OK. Yeah, any initial thoughts? Rummaging. Rummaging. Thank you. I need a uh, white sheet and a dead person. I mean, what's haunted? You've got sort of uh, ghost or poltergeist activity, sort of objects moving. Poltergeist, I'm thinking, I'm thinking lights on and off. I guess general sort of spooky stuff happening. I need uh, a lot of big string. Rope? String. But big string. Big, long string. A lot of big string. You see the amount of string that you was going to get? Mm -hmm. More string. Times it by two? Three. Wow. That's a lot of string. Tell me when you got the string. I'll give you an A lot of string. OK, bye-bye. All right, mate. Oh. So there were lots of classic spooky phrases in there. White Sheet was requested for the classic Ghost by Lee, Corpse, and then, of course, out on the biggest, the spookiest request of them all. <laughs> Some big, scary string. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So big. Yeah, yeah. My thing was to buy out all the string, cos there's nothing more scary than when you need string and there ain't none. 
Oh, I'm Greg Davis, I need some string. Oh, oh, yeah. Jamali's bought it all. All your thoughts start with, I'm Greg Davis, and then you have the thought <laughs> always. <laughs> always. <laughs> Good. OK, she's in a programme called Ghosts, but can she make ghosts? Let's see. It's Charlotte Ritchie first. Freaked out because I thought that was you in the chair. I did, did you? Mm. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good then. So I think if you ever go ahead and make your own horror film, mm. you, you shouldn't feature after the horrific reveal at the end of your film, <laughs> you shouldn't pop on and go, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of dampens it down a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. The worst thing was when I realised that that book hadn't flown out by itself, that she'd used string. <laughs> <laughs> it's scarier than that. She tried to get string. Went Can to the shop. There wasn't any string left. What? <laughs> 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 Who's next? Well, do you want to see the big string guy? Do I? Here he comes. Yeah. It's the one and only Jamali Maddox. <laughs> Shit with me, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Guess what it was? String. Yeah. <laughs> the images were so terrifying. I forgot about the string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was creeped out already with things flying off the wall, but when those two cabbages flew off that desk, <laughs> <laughs> that is classic horror. <laughs> Let's see another horror film, please. Okay. Would you like to see Sarah Kendall making the house look haunted? More than anything. Here we go. Play with us. Come play with us, Alex. Forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Genuinely creepy, Sarah. Thanks. A classic horror film called The Shining. The Shining took five years to make and 900 tons of salt, so similar to this show. <laughs> Do you, Why um... did it take 900 tons of salt? Because there's a scene where there's snow near the end and they did it with salt. Did they? Really? Hmm? Oh. oh, Kubrick. <laughs> I thought your film was excellent. Thank you very much, It was, Greg. spoiler alert, it creeped me out more than two cabbages. Wow. That's very... Thank you. That's wow. the kindest wow. review I've ever had. Wow. You're making big statements for no reason, I him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just so wound up about the lack of string in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Next, it's the ethereal Mike Wozniak. Little Alex Hall. Little Alex Horn. Come in. There's nothing to worry about, little Alex Horn. I've got some puppies covered in treacle.
Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> that was horrible. Um, an odd temptation to bring the victims in. Puppies covered in treacle, no? <laughs> I was trying to take two things and make them greater than the sum of yeah, their parts. If you put two nice things together, it doesn't necessarily and make also, I don't think a there big, is two, nice thing. I don't no. think there is two things, though. People famously say, come and see some puppies, and they say, come and see some treacle. Yeah. <laughs> Mike was determined, by the way, that I would be cutting two like he was cutting two, and he called it being hemisected. Hemisect. <laughs> it's a word. It's a real word. Just before we move on, can we just drill down into the narrative of your story? So the whole house is haunted. Right. Along comes an innocent, lovely taskmaster's assistant. This guy. It's got a bloodlust. All he wants to do is gobble you up. Hemisect you yeah. and, and spit you out again. Why didn't uh, little Alex the Horn's lovely character, assistant. the lovely assistant, why didn't it spot the already hemisected body outside? He thing? may well have done, but that was overridden by the lure of the treacle puppies. The lure of the treacle covered puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Finally, it's final Lee. <laughs> Hello, Lee. Are you easily frightened? I don't think so. Good. What time am I? Ah! Just checking to see. I say you're not, but you did flinch a bit there. Do you know the history of the caravan? I've always wondered about the history of the caravan. Many years ago, there was a lady by the name of Amy. Typical 21-year-old. She liked music, parties. But most of all, she only wanted her own caravan. She got her caravan. This is said caravan. Four days later, she wasn't alive. She was not alive. I'm going to find out now, with the aid of my Ouija board, exactly what happened that night. Amy! Are you there, Amy? Amy, are you there? Give us a sign if you are there. She's talking to me. Have you got any questions you'd like to ask Amy? Well, are you in heaven, Amy? Lovely. Oh, look, Alex. Yes? Can I be honest? OK. That was me. I thought it was you. I was I did, pulling that. I did see you. I hand. was pulling that. I've let you down. And I wish I hadn't. And I apologise about this. I'm no more of a psychic than, than you. So would you would you accept my apology? It's a lot of smoke. Is that Amy? Are you Amy? Who are you talking to? You can't see. No, it was just, just me. That was me. I was doing that and pulling the I don't like this. It's a nice cupboard. I can I... go now, Lee. Well, where are you going? To be honest, there's too much smoke to breathe. Right. But also, there's a dead lady there. I can't see her. All right. Bye bye, Lee. It's not real. Right. What are you doing? It's bye, not Lee. me. I've set okay. it up. I think we got away with that. <laughs> yeah. See, I thought we needed a film, we needed a twist. You did look freaked out. Well, I, I wouldn't warn about it. Yeah, well, it's a bit, it would be a bit odd to, to, to warn you about it, wouldn't it? But I think in horror films, they do warn the actors what's yeah. going to happen. Oh, you consider yourself an actor in that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I very much enjoyed your film. Shall I hand out some points? Some spooky points. I thought they were all really good, so no one is going to get one spooky point. OK. No one's going to get two <laughs> spooky points. Is anyone going to get any points? Three spooky points oh. go to Jamali and Charlotte's films. In second place, there are four points. I'm going to give it to the Treacle Puppy King and I'm going to give it to the Jocular Awful Twist film. Four points to Lee Mack and Mike Wozniak. Right. But by far the most atmospheric and spooky, five points, <laughs> Sarah. Well done, Sarah Kendall. <laughs> Quick look at the scores, please, Alex. Charlotte is on the bottom with ten. Mike is on the top with 17 again. <laughs> Runaway Wozniak and his tin of treacle. <laughs> <laughs> OK, everyone, please head to the stage for the final task of the show. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Greg. Hello, Greg. Hi. Hello. Hiya. Who's going to read it out, Alex? I'd like Jamali Maddox to read out the task, please, Greg. Correctly guess you're standing in the group. The taskmaster will read out a category, then you must hold the number that reflects your standing in the group. Most correct answer wins. The way it's going to work is that Greg will read out a category. For example, oldest contestant. If that was the category, obviously, Lee would put up one, and then the rest of you would guess your ages in the group as well. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> once you've heard the category, you must hold up your number within 20 seconds. And once it's up, you can't change your mind. If you're going to have five categories, most correct answers wins. Are you ready to hear the first category? Yes, yes, yes. please. Category one, most northerly birthplace. Oh. If you think you're the most northerly, hold up number one. If you think you're the most southerly, hold up number five. Which way is Australia? <laughs> it is it's not south. called down over, is it? It's really south. south. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Lee thinks he's the most northerly. Sarah thinks she's the most southerly. They're both correct. 
one point each. It goes Lee, Southport, then Mike. Oxford should be holding a number two. Then Jamali. East London should be holding a number three. Then Charlotte. Clapham South should be holding a number four. Then Sarah, who is holding number five. Newcastle, down under. Second category, Greg. Most pints of milk drunk per month. We asked all of you before the show to state how many pints of milk per month you drink. If you think that you drink the most, hold up number one. I don't know this about you, Mike, but I your instinct tells me you guzzle the stuff. <laughs> I'm an absolute bloody milk guzzler. <laughs> <laughs> They're all up. Charlotte and Jamali both think they drink the middle amount of milk. Mike Wozniak guzzles a lot of milk. He guzzles 37 pints of milk per month. What? Are you serious? You're you having a pint a day? I have more than a pint a day, I'm sure of it, yeah. What are you, a calf? <laughs> Is it uh, fed to you in a big bottle? <laughs> yeah. It's on cereal, a lot of tea and coffee, okay. and it's also drunk neat. <laughs> neat? <laughs> milk. <laughs> so Mike is correct. <laughs> Lee is also correct. He's a vegan. He has zero pints per month. Uh. So it goes. Mike the most with 37. Sarah second with eight pints per month. Oh. Then it goes Jamali third with five. He gets the point here. Okay. Charlotte fourth with three. Lee fifth with zero. The crudest category thus far coming up. Fewest phone contacts. <laughs> yeah, fewest friends, fewest. number one. Yeah, about this. I'm the oldest. But you not, have you not found that over the last ten years you've started to thin the herd? Are you suggesting I'm so old they've started to die off? No. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all the numbers are up. Four, four, three, two, two. No one thinks you're the fewest or the most. The person with the fewest friends is Jamali with 150. Ah. Sarah, you're correct. You are the second least popular with 315 contacts. Feels about right. Charlotte is third with 1,065. Mike fourth, no points, with 1,144. Lee has the most contacts with 3,065 in his phone. Don't have thousands. Yeah, but the problem yeah, is, is my that. phone sort of... But, look, I'm trying to... I'm very popular. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, if someone asks for a selfie, I ask for their number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm shameless. All fourth right. Category, please. Category four. An interesting revelation of personal hygiene. Most frequent washing of towels per month. <sighs> so the cleanest person holding up number one. There you go, Charlotte, straight away. Oh, we almost had one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. What's difficult about this is that fact that I don't know what's a lot because I have a bunch of towels. Yeah. Uh, I need to get flash, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got a lot of towels. <laughs> I've well, got a towel for each of my phone contacts. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte thinks she cleans her towels the most. 12 times per month, almost every third day, she's cleaning her towels. Yeah. Next clean is actually Jamali. You miss it again, unfortunately, Jamali. Then Lee, six times per month. And then we're really getting desperate. Sarah only washes her twice a month. Mike, you do get a point because you only wash them once a month. Yes. Absolute Ab scum. That's a scumbag. <laughs> Absolute scumbag. <laughs> Final category, Greg. Most eggs in one hand. Yes, we asked them how many eggs they think they can hold in one hand. I can also confirm we tested this. Straight up there, Jamali. Mm. I think I've got the biggest hands. Whoa, two oh, guys think I've got bigger hands. A lot of eggs. Pretty big balls time, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> no one thinks they can clutch the fewest eggs. Who do you think holds fewer eggs than you? You don't have to answer that. As your attorney, you don't have to I'm answer that. I'm going to answer that. I'd like to find out. It's part of the game. You think someone's got smaller hands than you? I don't know if it's about size. Yeah, it's absolutely about size. Cool. <laughs> technique. Technique as well. Well, Charlotte has the tiniest hand. She can only hold seven eggs, so she should have held up the number five. She should. Sarah <laughs> can only hold eight eggs. She should be holding up the number four. In third place, it's Mike with 11 eggs. So which of the men can hold the most eggs? I don't know why, I think Lee Mack can hold the most eggs. Well, I'll tell you that Jamali can hold 12 eggs in his hands. Lee Mack can hold 17 eggs in one hand. I just knew it. And hence, he play. is correctly holding I'm not the egg holder. And with that, Greg, the task is over. Come back down and we'll add those points and we'll decide who's won. <laughs> Hello again, Greg. Very good. Hello there. That must have had quite some impact on the scores. So not only can he hold 17 eggs, he can also guess where he fits in the standings, because he got four questions right, Lee. Wow. So Lee does get the five points. After that, Mike and Sarah came in second. They got two things right each. And joint fourth, Charlotte and Jamali got one each. So the points go two each to Charlotte and Jamali, four to Mike and Sarah, but Lee Mack gets five points. There it is. He knows himself. And so, the final scoreboard. Sarah came in second place with 17, but Mike won the episode, is also winning the series. He won it with 21 points. Yeah. 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 Mike Wozniak wins. Go and gather your victorious vessel. Thank you. Thank you.
So what have we learned today? We've known for some time that climate change is the gravest threat that humanity has ever faced. And we also know that cows are some of the greatest contributors to the global crisis. And 50% of those cows are feeding Mike Wozniak's milk habit. So what we've learned today is that Mike Wozniak is destroying the planet. We've also learned that he's won tonight's show and now has more vessels to fill with milky goodness. Mike Wozniak! <laughs> For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!